The lifeblood of a democracy is your ability to understand and act upon a problem once the facts are presented to you. The purpose of this is to take action. A growing dispute over the future of America's most popular doll. The question, should Barbie come in a plus-size edition? A Facebook group called Plus Size Modeling posted a petition online and it got 40,000 likes. But not everyone is on board. The double chin isn't necessary. I would prefer to see a Barbie, a plus size, a curvy girl Barbie doll that's not, that doesn't have a triple chin, but if that's all we get, I'll take it. No word yet from Barbie's maker, Mattel Toys, if the company plans on giving the doll a new look. Hey, crew guys, it's really a plus size model promotion. This is a hugely controversial, very sensitive topic, and the main reason it is so sensitive is because most of the population is overweight. About 70% of Australians and Americans, uh, I hope you can appreciate that. And some people out there say, oh, you're a fat shamer. You're so rude for mentioning someone's weight. You're this, you're that. Get over it. I'm here to deliver the truth. If you cannot handle it, unsubscribe, get off my channel. Because I'm here to help people. You know, we really need to drop these fragile situation. Needs to be stopped. We need to get fit and healthy. We need to get real with ourselves and realize that what the problem is here. Obesity is the terror within. It is destroying us, destroying our society from within. And unless we do something about it, the magnitude of the dilemma will dwarf 9-11 or any other terrorist event that you can point out to me. So this is a terror from within. It's destroying us. I am all for, like I've said in other videos, I'm all for people feeling their best, okay? If we are overweight, we are overweight, and, we, and statistics show time and time again, we are increasing our risk of all the major illnesses of this time. Cancer, diabetes, stroke, gout, all the nasty shit that you don't want to be a part of. Again, you're also cutting your life short. What's the difference between having weight, say, you know, of your woman on your arms or your thighs, as opposed to your waist. Why is it more dangerous if it's, if it's on your waist? Well, we're looking at where the fat is and what the fat is. So basically, what we've always talked about previously is the body mass index. That's a measure of your weight relative to your height. That's useful for a population study. But on an individual basis, it doesn't tell us, is it muscle tissue or is it fat tissue? Right. That's where the waist circumference comes in because it gives some, that's where the fat mm. is being deposited. And the thing is, why, but why is that bad? Um, I can understand it doesn't look good, but what is it actually doing to you? So those higher waist relations and the, the body diabetes in heart mm. disease factors. So like, this is body shaming and this is a body image abuse or whatever. Actually, this isn't, this isn't a, like a feminist issue, this isn't a cosmetic issue, this is a health issue. Okay, so get over this whole like physical, you know, aesthetic focus and let's focus on the health issue that is obvious. Alright, and you might say, oh, you know, you can be fat and you can be a bit overweight. Think about why being overweight is going to destroy your brain. There's plenty of research out there to show that people that are overweight, especially really overweight, have poor brain functions. A great study that was just published that showed that people that are obese have degeneration, like literally brain cells dying in parts of the brain like the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. Now, if that's happening to someone that's obese, what if you're 20 pounds or 30 pounds overweight? Then you want to. Are you actually going to follow through with it? Now, that's a whole psychology thing that I don't have time to talk about. But what I want to let you know is that here's what the science is showing. If you are overweight at all, you increase your levels of insulin, which is an inflammatory marker. Okay, and insulin is not a thing that should be floating around in your body. Everyone thinks that it's good because, you know, diabetics need insulin. But that, the best way to do that is to maintain a healthy weight. Now, if you're already overweight, what do you need to do? Well, in my opinion, you need to have... We've been harping on about anorexic models for forever, okay, and how they're not a good representative. You know, they're, sm they're you know, snorting coke, same thing. Okay, like how are they presenting a healthy role model? How are they being a healthy role model? When she was starting as a plus size model, being an athlete, I played volleyball and basketball for nine years. So I was very fit, but I was larger. I was probably like a size 12. And when I went to New York, they were like, oh, you're great, but can you gain weight? And I thought that was so weird because that is not what a 17 year old wants to hear. Uh, first to be called plus size and then to be told to gain weight. And so because I went to college, I was now a size 14. 
and I started to make, you know, six figures at 18 years old, and I thought that was the happiness that I was looking for, and as a young girl, you're told, will make you feel valued, and so when that happened, and I didn't feel that happiness, and I didn't really feel that value I was searching for, um, I really wanted to find it in my health, because I knew at the end of the day, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with my with my body, I didn't feel healthy, I didn't feel I lost 50 pounds after learning how to eat right, and to just told um, this is the best place for my body, I'm now about a size 8. Okay, well, you know, it's like when you're in a relationship and you're comfortable, you know, we're comfortable, we need to face the facts. So there's a lot of people out there like, no, 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 you gotta love you, love you, love you to the mirror, and then after that you go out there and you have a pizza, or you have, you know, a steak, or something like that, which abuses your organism, which does not make you feel loved, okay? You have to love your body through your actions, okay? And your actions mean eating nutritious food, high-carb vegan diet. That is the way you truly love yourself. So then when you're at that size, you know, you're starting. Some of you might be using the excuse, oh, it's my genetics, you know, I can't. Now use them as motivation and step up and reclaim your health or claim it for the first time ever. Um, yes, my, my entire family is obese and I have to weigh, and uh, it, it's, it's just beyond tragic, and I think calling what gets people to that point beautiful is dangerous and really cruel. Um, I think it comes from a good place, wanting people to feel good. But I think, and there's people out there saying, "Freely, you're out of the eating disorder and embrace audibly eating." So remember, folks, this is not a cosmetic issue about aesthetics, about fat. Personal opinion, that's fine, but this is a health issue that needs to be addressed. We need healthy, fit, lean role models in society. You don't have to look like me. I'm not saying look like me. I'm saying like the healthiest version of yourself. And for everybody, that is a fit, lean body. And everybody is capable of doing that. So you've got to step up and claim what has always been yours, and that's to be your see you Go free to cherry song.